He spent many years uh, uh, in prison for a crime he did not commit. And on my left is another one of my heroes. Uh, his name is Magdaleno Rosavia, and he is the executive director of Witness to Innocence and the executive producer of this film, and been working in social justice for, we don't want to say how long, a long time. And then our co-producer? And our co-producer, Christy Webb, um, who works for my company, Pro Bono Productions, for over 30 years, and I couldn't have done any of my films without her. Thank you for being here. I love you. It's, uh, um, yeah, um, how meaningful is it for you to bring your film here to this festival? It's extremely meaningful, especially for a festival that, that showcases films about social justice, about making change. I've been making social justice films for 45 years, okay? And you don't go into this to think that you make a lot of money, but you go into it because you want to make a difference. And I passionately believe that if we can touch hearts, we can change minds. And so that's why, uh, you know, I, I do the work that I do. And I think the importance of our film and a lot of the films that are being shown here in a time when not only our country but some countries around the world have lost their perspective about people and the relevancy of social communities, that it's the filmmakers that have to be the voice and present the voices of people who are talking about the issues that countries need to be involved in and to change things so all citizens live a better life. Talk a little bit about yeah, definitely uh, a little louder. This uh, this film amplifies the life of an exonerated death row prison and what we went through in there, as well as what we go through once we are released. It tells about the pain and suffering that our families went through while we was in there fighting for our lives. It tells about the human factor that we all make mistakes and reasons why it shouldn't even be a death row. It shows the human side of the death row is going to read. Like me, I was there for 12 years for something I didn't do. All the people, most of the people in the film are death row is going to read, men and women. And our story is finally getting out there and being told so the world can see that, hey, it's a problem here with death row. We shouldn't be tinkering with it. And that it's so many people just like all of us, you and me, you know, who could easily go through what we want. This is great being on the red carpet, right? <laughs> uh, in socially relevant issues, we have to be flexible, use our imaginations, and prop up the people who we care about. We're happy to be here at the Socially Relevant Film Festival because it, it gives the public an opportunity to see our films, and sometimes they there there is not that opportunity in other places, so this venue is very, very important. I also think it's important that people realize how broken the justice system is, okay? You could be rich and kill people and get away with it. You can be poor and go to prison and actually get executed. There's been dozens of executed innocent people in this country. We know there are 157 exonerees. Those are the people we know about, it, that we know about. But what about the ones that are still there? Um, because once you get convicted, it is very difficult to get yourself out of that situation because it's never about guilt or innocence as you go into your appeals. It's about a mistake in some procedural error happening. Um, so it is really important for people to understand that innocent people do go to prison. Sometimes they even get executed. And when you hear the stories, the stories of, of these men and women we profile, there's 157, we profile 16 in our film, 14 men and two women. Um, and some of them had just gotten literally out of prison when we shot the film uh, in fall of 2016. So uh, we, we hope that it makes people rethink the death penalty. Um, because, you know, we don't have to become the murderer. You know, we, we have very great prisons that we can keep people in if they're dangerous, and certainly we should. But prisons have lost sight of what they're about. They used to be about rehabilitation. Now they're only about punishment, and now with our 
new government, it's going to get worse and worse and worse because more prisons are going to become privatized. It's going to be about money and it's going to be about making sure there are people in those beds. And so we have to fight back against injustice and we need to speak out. And the voices of the exonerated death row survivors are the most powerful voices to end the death penalty in this country. Let me just say that uh, the films are very important, but it's also important to have you here to help us tell our stories to a wider audience. And that's what we must do is uh, take these relevant social issues and make them everybody's issues. Are you familiar with that uh, play? I am extremely familiar because the woman character in that film mm -hmm. named Sunny Jacobs Okay, so I'm going to divert a little bit, but I'm the person that got her out of prison. <laughs> That's okay. What's the name of the film? Well, the, the I made a, a well, but the she's, she's not in the gathering, but this is this is what got me involved in death penalty because she was my best childhood friend I hadn't seen in 30 years when I found out she and her husband were on death row in Florida. I was living in Los Angeles being a filmmaker. I was shocked to hear that story, and I started to write to her. And one day she called me collect, and I said, Sonny, forgive me for asking, but what the hell happened? And she said she was innocent. And that set me and my co-producer on a two and a half year journey where we left Los Angeles, spent two and a half years in Florida, where we uncovered the evidence that not only proved her innocence, but proved her husband's innocence, who the state of Florida had already executed. And I did, was able to make a big Hollywood movie, a dramatic film called In the Blink of an Eye with Jimmy Rogers, Veronica Hamill, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, Denise Richards, Holly Bergen, and Pfeiffer Laurie. And that film, when it was released in 1996, changed a lot of people's attitudes because people think, oh, you're in prison, you must, have, you must be guilty. Um, but that's how I got involved in death penalty. And then shortly after that, I met this man here. And uh, meeting him was such an inspiration for me. And I've been on this path of um, trying to educate people that we should be civilized like all the European countries. You know, we're the only Western nation that executes its own people. And we have more crime, more violence than anybody else. So we, we need to put our resources into children, into the impoverished children, into disenfranchised children, so people don't go to prison. Okay, we put. We need to do more, and we need to do better. So last night, Nate and I were at a dinner with, uh, at a table with Jessica Bland, who was one of the writers and directors of The Exonerated. Yeah. And there's a lot of people who, uh, and we continue to work with Jessica and her husband Eric on a number of different projects. But it's people who, like uh, Mickey, who put their money, and their time, and their dreams together so that other people may learn from them. Uh, just one more question. Uh, is it also, don't you say, it's also related to racism in this country? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it doesn't transcend. White people are not executed like that. Well, white people are executed, but in terms of the numbers of people, in terms of percentages, obviously the more minorities are on, on death row than anybody else. Uh, we talk about that issue. Uh, one of our exonerees in the film says that the death penalty is never form, another form of slavery. Okay. So certainly there is bias and prejudice against minorities, but I'm going to yeah. let Nate yeah. speak to that. Yeah, well, you know, it's been 158 mistakes, people that were sent, sentenced to death who weren't supposed to be there. 158 mistakes. If your car broke down 158 times, what would you do? You would get rid of it, correct? You would get rid of that car. So why are we holding on to this death penalty when it has sent 158 of our citizens, white, black, brown, to death row for something they didn't do? Why are we holding on to it? I'm the living proof standing here today. I'm one of those 158 people who was on death row waiting to die for something I didn't do. And this is what this film is about. I had two execution dates. Well, it's really just the grace of God I'm standing here. But I didn't do the crime. And so didn't all the other 157 guys. And that's what we're trying to get out. We all make mistakes, and the system should not be taken with the death penalty because we all make mistakes. It's going to happen. One innocent person, two, three, four, has already been executed. One is too many. 
one mistake in the death row is too many. And that's what this, this movie is defining. What's happening with the death penalty and why we shouldn't be tinkering with it. We have failed as a civilization. If we had to come back and say the only way to correct a problem is to kill someone, we have failed. We have completely failed because that's not civilized to do that. But anything is not civilized to do that because once you start tinkering in it, it's going to be a backlash to it because once again, we all make mistakes. You might get a few that probably was guilty, but in that batch, one, two, three, that's too many. One person, that's too many. You've taken that person from his family, his kids, and his whole life. I just want to give you one statistic. For every nine executions in this country, one death row uh, inmate is exonerated. Okay. For every nine, one is found innocent. Okay. So if you were up in the airplane, in the sky and nine planes were flying and every time one was going to drop out of the air, you probably wouldn't fly anymore. Okay, so that statistic is horrifying, okay, that one out of nine are innocent. So if you're a black person, you're five to seven times more likely to get the death penalty if you kill a white person. Now, Nate and I kill each other. We, we might get a life sentence of 20 years, but if we kill a white person, and God forbid they're blonde, and blue-eyed, then you're really in trouble. So it's about race and it's about economics. So the white people that are on death row didn't have the money to get the proper defense. If you get the proper defense, proper investigation, you have a good chance of getting justice. Because even if you got justice, we need to figure out why we need to sentence people. And as Nate said, we are not doing our job in society, in our schools. We have too many people in prison. And our answer is punishment as opposed to reconciliation and healing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Come see our film tomorrow at 4.